Imagine if golden staph, urinary tract infections, and tuberculosis couldn't be fixed with medication. Well, treatment-resistant types of each of these conditions already exist. The number of superbugs resistant to antimicrobials, most notably antibiotics, which we'll focus on, but also antifungals and antivirals, is growing. It's happening because of a combination of antimicrobial overuse, misuse, and the climate crisis. The CSIRO is warning of a post-antibiotic future, coming as soon as 2050. So what was life like before antibiotics? Antibiotics were discovered by a Scottish scientist almost 100 years ago, but they didn't go into widespread production until World War II. Just look at what's happened to Australia's life expectancy since then. It's impossible to say how much of that is a result of antibiotic use, but it certainly helps that infected wounds and bacterial pneumonia became treatable rather than effective death sentences. Antimicrobials, of course, don't just help people, they work on animals too. And as the global population ballooned in the 20th century, the use of these drugs in agriculture played a big role in keeping us fed. In the 1960s, scientists began discovering superbugs, bacteria resistant to many available antibiotics. These bugs keep adapting and science is struggling to keep up. There have been no new classes of antibiotics discovered since 1987. Infections are caused by microorganisms, living things that can evolve mechanisms to protect themselves. Over time, natural selection means that those that are able to survive contact with antimicrobial medications become more prevalent. Treatment-resistant infections, or superbugs, killed about as many people globally in 2019 as HIV and malaria combined. A scientist warned this figure could be eight times bigger by 2050. In 27 years, this could severely impact the quality and the length of our lives. Before my 60th birthday, meat could be rare and risky to eat. But how is this happening? Well, Dr. Branwen Morgan from the CSIRO says, the more we use antibiotics, the faster we lose them and we use them a lot. One Australian study into the use of antimicrobials, which covers antibiotics, but also other medications like antifungals, found that about one quarter of hospital prescriptions were inappropriate, and that GPs commonly prescribe them for conditions such as bronchitis and sinusitis, from which most people will recover without the need for antibiotics. Now consider the widespread use of antibiotics in agriculture something that large producers are near constantly coming under fire for doing irresponsibly. On top of that, there's also the climate crisis. Dr. Morgan says that global heating means that bacteria and other microorganisms will grow faster and spread to new geographical areas. As she also says that natural disasters can damage critical infrastructure, like sewage systems, making disaster areas local hotspots for the spread and evolution of superbugs. There's a global push to find more antibiotics, but Dr. Morgan says it's not that simple. The research is slow and expensive, and most drugs don't make it to human clinical trials. In February, the CSIRO released a report detailing the National Science Agency's mission to fight superbugs. Currently, our best estimates suggest that superbugs kill about 1,000 people in Australia every year. But according to scientists, we aren't collecting enough sophisticated data to fully grasp what is going on. Dr. Morgan told me, for example, that oncologists are saying superbugs are the second biggest cause of death in their cancer patients. The CSIRO report details a host of emerging high-tech solutions. Think surface sprays that can identify dangerous pathogens, neutralizing technologies in our sewage systems, and toothbrushes that can self-sterilize. Dr. Morgan says we also need to protect the life-saving medications that we already have. And to do that, we need to change our behavior and take responsibility for the problem. That means structural changes like improved professional practices in hospitals and on farms. And it means thinking twice before taking half a packet of leftover amoxicillin when you've got a scratchy throat. Dr. Morgan says we have a critical window of opportunity to act now to avoid going back to a time when simple infections were deadly and surgeries were too risky to perform.